a classic example in a lot of physics textbooks for really expensive. But in reality, it's not. In the, the Physics 110 book, every example that the author uses for Bernoulli's principle is actually not Bernoulli's principle. This is the Kawanda effect. This might us somewhere. So is that related to how planes fly? Uh, there are two theories on how planes fly. Kawanda effect is one of them. The trouble is why this is not Bernoulli is that, and with planes flying also, is that when you're looking at the lift on a wing, you're looking at the air going around both sides of the wings. Bernoulli's principle deals with the same fluid flow. It doesn't deal with fluids on opposite sides of uh, a plane wing or opposite sides of a ball. Purple also is another example. That's actually, well, let's write them up. So, Gawanda. I think the accent is there on the A effect. For a baseball, curveballs, that is the Magnus effect or Mangus effect. Those letters might be backwards. Uh, for airplanes, it could be Kawanda effect or the Might have those letters backwards. Uh, Lancaster or Lanchester effect. Okay. Shower curtains, that's another classic uh, Bernoulli's principle. That air is flowing next to the shower curtain, uh, or water is flowing next to the shower curtain, getting the air to move faster, thereby lowering the pressure inside, and so therefore pressure pushes it in. Uh, the most recent theory on that one is the horizontal vertex theory. All right, so why do physics textbooks wrong? In addition, because they really don't care. The physicists, for the most part, aren't dealing with fluids. This is an engineering problem. Physicists look at it and go, we're still going to call it Bernoulli because it's still a difference in pressure. I mean, that, that part is true. But, you know, call it what you want. Uh, we're not changing. Because physicists are basically stubborn and bigoted. One might even say arrogant. Definitely. Uh, so, most of the examples given are still dealing with pressure differentials, uh, but one of these other ones explains it. Uh, this one actually is also dealing with the speed, that's the viscosity, it's the, the friction that happens between a fluid and a solid. Matter of fact, if you read the physics of baseball, after he talks about this, he has a footnote saying, it's not Bernoulli's, very explicitly. If I wanted to be Bernoulli's, I would have said Bernoulli's. It is not Bernoulli's. Uh, that was, I believe, the Kawanda effect the demonstration right there. So in the future, if you see people talking about Bernoulli's principle, you have a choice. You can correct them assuming that they're using the wrong reference, which probably they are. Correct them, or don't correct them. You can go, I know what you're talking about, or you can go, yeah, but you're so ignorant. Whatever works for you. And if you have family getting together at Christmas time, it's a chance to work on one of those as you deal with family. All right. I'm going to do an example that the textbook uses, and then, yeah, we'll have time. I'm going to do it a second time with 
what I believe to be more accurate answer. As there are some assumptions, there's an assumption that the textbook makes that we don't have to make. Questions before I erase? So the example comes from, there's, there's more of a backstory, but in essence, clog sink, we've got water right here, we've got a, and he, it's basically, it's too shallow in order to keep scooping, make the scooping worthwhile, so he decides to siphon it off into a bucket down below. And the question is, how fast is the water flowing out here? That, that's the problem. Giving some numbers here, Diameter of the pipe is 1.2 centimeters. Uh, this right here is five centimeters. I got a 0.36 meters written in there also. Uh, this distance here from this end of the pipe to that end of the pipe is 0.79 meters. So once you get the siphoning going, then it sort of deals with itself. I don't know if any of you have ever siphoned. Uh, if nothing else, I remember as a kid, once we learned about it, we started doing it with, with soda. You get a straw, put a bending straw, suck on it, get the, floor, floor, get the liquid flowing, and then just let it continue to flow. All right. so. I've got the situation, I've got, we'll call this one here and two down here. So Bernoulli says that P1 plus one half rho V1, that's velocity squared, plus rho G H1, one, one equals P2 plus one half rho V2 squared plus rho G H2. We are dealing with the same fluid along the pipe, so we're not dealing with two different fluids, and so Bernoulli applies here. <clears throat> now, the assumption that he makes, or she, cats, that she makes, is that the air pressure is the same at both spots. And that's one that we'll address later. So we got air pressure here, air pressure here, close enough to the same. They're somewhere around 10 to the, uh, into the fifth pascals, but those we will assume are the same. Also makes the assumption that since this is much, uh, that this is gonna drain considerably more slowly than this will fill. And so she makes the assumption that V1, the velocity at this point, or the speed at this point, is close enough to zero meters per second. So what we're left with here is the, the potential energy, gravitational potential energy divided by the volume is equal to, well, basically kinetic plus potential. Uh, since all my terms have rho in it, I can get rid of it. So I'm left with GH1 equals one half V2 squared plus GH2. Since I'm trying to figure out the speed at which it's coming out over there, I solve for V2. V2 is two, G, H1 minus H2, square root. Which is square root of two times 9.8 times H1 minus H2 is just the difference in this height, 0.79. What do we get?
units. All right. So a little under four meters per second is how fast it's going to be coming out. Uh, nine miles an hour. However, let's put just a touch of reality into it. The pressure at one and the pressure at two are not necessarily the same. Because there is a difference in pre air pressure depending upon your elevation. Now, I can't really use the rho gy because we're dealing with a compressible fluid. I mean, you can make the assumption that it's incompressible, but we, I think we all know that it's not demonstrated by the air going up into the stopper or into the, the bulb. So what is the formula for the air pressure with elevation? Fortunately, I looked it up. I suspect it was found experimentally as opposed to derived. It was an engineering site, so odds are it was found experimentally. But the pressure, air pressure, at 20 degrees Celsius, I believe, is equal to the atmospheric pressure times 1 minus 2.25577 times 10 to the negative fifth times the elevation, and that one, one minus that raised to the 5.25588. Now we're dealing with very small difference here. I mean, this formula is applicable to hundreds of, uh, you know, 100,000 meters, and we're dealing with under one meter so we probably, it's legitimate to make us some approximations here. I'm just gonna let this be A and this be B. So one minus AH to the B power. Since H is gonna be under a meter and A is times 10 to the negative fifth, this is significantly less than one. All right, binomial approximations. I'm assuming you have, what calc are you in? You're in calc two or calc three or you're done with it? Finish calc three. Finish calc three. Yeah. You finished with calc three. Finish with calc two. Calc two. Tabor series, McMahon series, ringing a bell? Yeah. Binomial approximations? That ring the bell? So <laughs> a little less than the linear. Okay. Same thing as linear approximation. Uh possibly. I, I what would what would this if the second term of the binomial is significantly less than one? I guess if it's one plus or minus something, and the second part is significantly less than one, what does this approximate out to? One p. One to the. Oh, one to that power. Yeah. Oh, uh, which would be one. Uh, no, we can do slightly better than that. Although, it is indeed approximation, uh, an approximation. Approximation. Yeah, I said it wrong the first time. We want. That would be sort of a first order approximation. We can do a second order approximation here. So we want the first two terms. Uh, so if I did one plus a squared, what is that? Not approximate, just what is, if I'm squaring that binomial. One plus two a plus a squared. And 
if I did 1 plus a cubed, Picture the triangle, I just couldn't get in between like the six. I couldn't even draw the six. Yeah, I you know, I like to write stuff down. So that's my engineering training training just taught me nowhere to look it up. So all right. So in essence, if A is really small, well, all of those terms drop out. Because if A is small, A squared is, is tiny a cubed anything longer is thrown out. If it were a one minus a, well, the difference would be if that were minus, excellent, there we go. If that's minus, then that becomes minus, minus, minus. If we extended it, that would be minus. Every other one is negative. But this second term here is just the exponent times the second term. So this would be approximately 1 minus B A H. If you pursue physics, that the short angle approximation is probably the best two approximations uh, to know. So my pressure. the air, P air down here, otherwise known as P2, is going to be equal to P naught times 1 minus BAH, uh, H2. And this will be P1, that should be plus there, uh, no, yes, that should be equal sign and right the first time. P1 would be P0 times 1 minus B A H1. So with that, we can go back to Bernoulli's equation and not get rid of the P's. Now I am going to assume that V1 is still, is still small. If you don't want to do that, then just keep it in. But we're going to assume that V1 is still approximately zero meters per second. But stick in P. So we 3.9 meters per second the first time. And so I have P C is zero, I'm going to distribute, minus P zero B A H one plus rho G H one equals P zero minus P zero B A H two plus one half rho V two squared plus rho G H two. 
since I'm solving for V2, get everything else over here, my V0s cancel out. I'm left with PVAH2 minus H1 plus rho G H1 minus H2 is equal to one half rho V2 squared. Multiply everything by two over rho. Two, that's a P sub zero. Two over rho P sub zero V A H2 minus H1 plus two G H1 minus H2. The square root of all of that is equal to V2. We're going to notice a like, different answer. Now we can always go back to the first one. Uh, this term drops out for the first one because they assumed that the pressure was the same, air pressure was the same. And now plug and join. I have two over the density of air. I'm assuming that is 1.293. Atmospheric pressure, 10 to the fifth. Uh, B is 5.5.255. 5 A, 2.2555. Five seven seven times ten to the negative fifth. H two minus H one negative point seven five or seven nine plus two times nine point eight times H one minus H two, which is point seven nine. And then square root of that whole thing. 